Hello, and welcome to the Scholarly Communications video series from the Himmelfarb Health Sciences Library. My name is Tom Harrod, and I'm the Associate Director for Reference, Instruction, and Access at the Himmelfarb Library. Today, we will briefly be talking about journal impact factors, so let's get started. Here's an outline of what I'll be discussing. First, I'm going to talk about what is a journal impact factor and how is it calculated. Next, I'm going to talk about where you can find impact factors. Then, we'll look at how you consider impact factor values in context. And finally, I want to address the question of why don't all academic journals have an impact factor? So what is the impact factor and how is it calculated? Journal impact factor is a metric which is meant to convey the importance or prestige of a particular journal, with the idea being that the higher the impact factor, the more important or prestigious the journal is. Uh, you can see a formula in the middle here for how impact factor is calculated, but basically an impact factor is the number of citations that the average article from a particular journal receives in the first couple years after publication. And it's because of this that there's always a lag in terms of what the most recent impact factor values are. So for instance, today, on September 21st, 2023, the most current impact factor information available is the 2022 values. The next question I want to look at is where you can find impact factors. So they can be found in a resource called Journal Citation Reports. So let's go and take a look at that now. So I'm going to go to the Himmelfarb Library webpage, himmelfarb.gwu.edu, and I'm going to scroll down to All Databases. Then I'm going to click the letter J, and here is Journal Citation Reports. And on the subsequent screen, I'm going to enter the name of the journal that I want information about. So the journal nature, and I click on it here. And if I scroll down, I can see that the 2022 impact factor for nature was 64.8. So the next thing I want to talk about is considering impact factors in context. And the reason for that is the most common question that people ask about impact factors is, is that number good or bad? Um, and the answer is it depends. There are significant variations in citation patterns among researchers in different fields, which means that an impact factor that is good in a journal from one field might be not so good in a journal from another field. So I'm going to go back to journal citation reports and I'm going to look for another journal. So the Journal of Immunology, I'm going to go ahead and click there. And if I scroll down, I can see that the 2022 impact factor for this journal is 4.4. So is that good or bad? And one of the ways to answer that is if I scroll down on this record, there's a section called Rank by Journal Impact Factor. And so there are 161 journals within the journal citation reports that have been categorized as immunology journals. This particular journal, the Journal of Immunology, is the 77th highest ranked journal among those in terms of impact factor. So it puts it right in, right around the middle in terms of the percentile. So one of the questions that people often ask at this point is, well, what are the best journals in this particular field? So to answer that, I can scroll up. And at the top of this record is this gray box that says Journal Information, and here is the category that uh, for this journal, Journal of Immunology. So I'm going to click on this, and on the subsequent page, what it shows me are those 161 immunology journals ranked in descending order by 2022 impact factor. So I can see what are the top-rated journals within that category. So another question that people often ask is, why don't all academic journals have an impact factor? And there are a number of possible reasons for this. Among those are the age of the journal. So if you think uh, back to how impact factors are calculated, it takes several years to collect enough information to uh, determine an impact factor. And so a journal may just be too new to to have an impact factor. Not enough time has elapsed to allow for the collection of the data required to calculate an impact factor. Uh, another reason is suspicious uh, citation patterns. So there are journals that 
were in journal citation reports, but the editors of journal citation reports have determined that they are exhibiting suspicious citation patterns, meant, you know, the idea being that they may be involved in practices meant to boost their impact factor artificially. And so if the editors notice that, they will often drop those journals from journal citation report. Uh, additionally, many journals are not included as the editors uh, who produce this resource have very rigorous, uh, have a very rigorous editorial process to decide which journals will be included. So many journals are excluded as they don't meet the criteria that have been set forth. Um, thank you for taking the time to listen to Journal Impact Factors, What You Need to Know. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please visit our video library where you can see other videos in this series as well as the associated slides. If you have any questions about the material covered in the session or have questions specific to your own research, don't hesitate to contact me at tph at gwu.edu. On behalf of the Himmelfarb Library Scholarly Communications Team, thank you for listening.